Well, today the mailman stopped by and dropped off some goodies for an upcoming project. What I've got here are a couple of large contactors. These are Allen Bradley um, 700DC F400s. You can see the cool label there. Uh, what this is, is basically a huge relay. And it's got like a large coil here, just like a relay would. And when you energize it with 24 volts DC in this case, it pulls the contactor in. Um, which will connect the AC connection points. There's four overall. And that can handle from a 120 volts up to 600 volts in this case of switching. So these are used a lot for um, motor starting, HVAC units, and things like that. Anything that requires high current, um, high voltage AC loads, these are what you use. So pretty cool. Um, I'm not after them for their switching capabilities. I'm after them for the noise and we'll show you what that is all about when we're done here. Um, to power them up, we're just going to use this cheapo eBay 24 volt power supply I have. Should be more than enough. I do need to measure um, you know, how many amps these require to load. I did hit them with the multimeter just a minute ago on both ends of the coil. Just to make sure the coils aren't shorted out because these were used. You can see they have some interesting heat marking, which I hope doesn't mean those coils burned. But they are not showing open and they show a decent amount of resistance, certainly what looks to be in spec, so they should fire up. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to do here is pull this off, which is my hilariously failed experiment to use Apple and AFP like cinema display with uh, PC DVI. Those require 24 volts to power. Um, and yeah, that, that didn't work so well. So, failed project. I'm going to throw this away, um, pull this out, and then we're going to connect it here and see if we can make some cool noise. Before testing, I'm going to tear this apart so you can see how it works. Um, there's just a few screws to pull the covers off. And then inside, you can see we have our four channels here. And in between each one of them, you've got these little fingers, and then they've got a little contact pad there. So when that coil is energized, it just draws this down, and then on both sides it connects and the current can flow. Very simple. Underneath you have the mechanicals of it, which is the most metal looking plunger on the uh, planet that I've seen at least. Return spring, and then here's your coil with its two electrical connectors. And all that is is a big chunk of ferrous material in the middle, and then you have all this magnet wire that's just wrapped around it. And when that's energized, it creates an electromagnet, just kind of like the uh, the nail and magnet wire you may have done um, in school or other experiments. And when that magnetic field is created, it sucks this guy down, which then draws these down, and that's what makes contact. Very simple. Um, and because it has these little steel plates where it strikes against, um, and this little bit here, and this is so heavy, that's where we get our awesome clickety-clackety sound, which is exactly what we're after. Uh, which you'll see here, because now we're going to move on to testing. Okay, here's our test setup. Contactor connected to power supply. Polarity does not matter, since we're just firing up a coil, so we just have to put electricity through it. Then we've got our multimeter to measure the amperage that this requires to operate, and a little switch to get it going. Um, one thing that is missing is any protection for the power supply here. Normally you would have um, a diode running between the two poles on the coil because when you de-energize it, the magnetic field is going to collapse and that's going to introduce voltage back into the system and it's really anybody's guess which way it's going to go. Um, so you can damage components like transistors and controllers and stuff like that if you don't control it. So you usually put a diode in place um, to make sure it flows the right way back into the power stream and doesn't destroy anything. I don't care about this cheap Chinese power supply, so we're just going to go for it. And I don't think it would really damage it anyways. So, um, because again, I'm thinking this is going to operate under mm, about an amp, maybe half an amp. These seem to be pretty efficient from what I've seen. So um, let's find out. I'm going to plug it in. Stage one, no smoke. Always a good sign, right? And uh, let's give it a push. Oh, look at that. It works. Beautiful. And uh, man, we are drawing way under half an amp. That is perfect. That means I can get away with a much, much smaller 24 volt power supply. I don't need 10 amps um, worth of power supply. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to hit it a few times, and you can guess what I might be using two of these for. Here we go.
There you go, that's enough hits. Something in the game territory. Um, that's going to be a upcoming project when I get to it. But hey, I know that this works, so that's going to be beautiful. If you can kind of feel it through the desk, which is also what we're going for. Um, I'm going to go test out the twin though, see how things are going and call it a night. So thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for this upcoming uh, very fun project.